Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. This is the uh, servo, the air mix door servo on the uh, 2004 IS300 that I'm working on. I took it apart and here's what I found inside. Um, in spite of my very careful efforts, I did break one of these little latches, but there's about six of them, so I don't think it'll matter that much. As everything appears to be normal, but as I take my hand on the lever and I move it, what I can see happening is this worm gear has about, it has some movement available to it. And the connection to the little electric motor of the worm gear is, is sort of one of these things. If you, it, It's a little, uh, I don't know what the word is for it, but it, it's like a yoke. It's like two yokes that come together like that. One yoke coming off of the electric motor and the other yoke on this little worm gear. And if I'm going to see if I can show it to you. But when I move it, there, you see the yoke going in and out, in and out, like that. So when this lever tries to move the air mix door up or down, it's always going back and forth, back and forth. I think there's enough play so that this yoke on the worm gear and the yoke on the electric motor just disengage from each other. So what I've got to do is I've got to shim it up so that there's no play in there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to turn the camera off now and try and figure that out a little bit. Uh, I hope that got, uh, I hope it stayed in frame. I'll be back. Okay, I took a look at it. Now the, the motor is in there pretty solid. Alright, and, and there are some other pieces here that clamp down and hold the motor in there. So I can't really move the motor much at all. But this worm gear I can move quite a lot. There, I think you may be able to see, be able to see that movement there. So what I've got to do is figure out a little shim that I'm going to jam in there. And then when I put these two clamshells back together, the shim will stay in its place. Or maybe I'll glue it. I don't know. It's, I don't know how good glue will work because it's pretty greasy there. And I don't really want to tear this all apart and degrease it and then re-grease it. Um, Okay, I'm going to go off camera again, see if I can figure out a shim to go in there. Okay, pay attention. Here's what I did. To take up that worm movement that I think was allowing a disengagement. Well, let me put this on uh, close-up. Okay. This little tab here, this little um, yoke that engages into the worm gear, like that, see how it goes together? Uh, I, what I did was, I, want, I, I tried to think of ways to shim and move the motor closer, or move the worm gear, the worm gear closer. Here's what I ended up doing. The measurement from where the worm gear goes over the shaft was 13 was 13 30 seconds, and I figured I knew needed about two thirty seconds so that it wouldn't slip out. So I took a pair of diagonal cutters. I didn't want to tear up the inside of the motor, so I used some dikes to hold to support underneath the yoke. I'm going to call it a yoke. And then I put it in the, I put it on top of the vise like this and then I lightly tapped with a small hammer. Uh, it's a press fit. I figure that's a press fit on the shaft. So I tapped it so that I got 230 seconds closer to the worm. You follow me? So now the worm gear Sorry, I keep getting out of frame. So now the worm gear, gear has got no place to go. I didn't change anything on this end or this end or here. I just moved that little tab, that little yoke. I moved it 230 seconds that way. 
So, you know, there's less shaft in there, but so what? That doesn't matter. Now, let me show it to you inside in, in, the, um, uh, in the servo. Okay, I've got to do this without moving anything here because I've got the... Oh, let me make sure. I don't want it on close-up anymore. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Here we go. So now... There, I marked that so that goes up in the same place. So if there's polarity, I've got the polarity correct. And it just pops down there like that. Now, here, when I move this, all these gears, and I try to move the worm gear, you see what I got? No movement here at all. It can't slip in and out of the yoke. So, if my assumption is correct that that's what was happening. I think I fixed it. This press fit, I don't know, that should last quite a long time. I just slipped it a little bit. It's it's all really small parts. There's no pressure on it that way or that way. Um, and who knows what tolerance it's built to? I don't know. But I'm going to put it back, snap it back together. I'm going to grease it, snap it back together, and try and put some DC to a couple of these connectors and see if it moves uh, without doing that cracky noise that it was doing before. Um, so that's it. Uh, let me put back together and uh, uh, we'll see if I can find some DC. I, sp I uh, sprayed out some, uh, some white grease but I didn't want to spray it all over the place in there. I've got some silicone uh, grease it's the the white grease was a little too runny there so I'm gonna put some silicone grease silicone grease in there I'm just gonna take a toothpick or something and dab it around in there and uh, I think that'll work okay yeah when you have the motor out you can spin these gears really easily Actually, you can lift out. You lift out that gear. This one, I think it's it's pressed in or with that lever on the other side. But you can get a lot of grease in there. Don't over grease it. You know, because it's just going to go flying and make a mess. That yeah, looks pretty good. You, know, you might put a little grease on the post. Yeah. Okay, now I actually have a little bit of a hard time getting the motor in and out. I have to lift it out on both ends at the same time, so I know I've got a nice tight fit. As long as it, as long as this yoke doesn't start walking back, and I lose those two thirty seconds that I had, then it should be okay. Uh, I put it back together, and I'm trying to get some indication of whether the little electric motor works. I assume it should work because it was making a racket before, um, but I'm just. Uh, shooting in the dark here um, my, my buddy Jason from my IS gave me the pin locations but there's nothing on this there's nothing marked here that tells me what these pins are I guess the the markings must be on the plug side so I think what I'm going to do is just wait till the car is back here and then uh, I'll I'll just plug it in without doing the install first I'll just plug it into the to the car and uh, run the knob and see if it see if it moves or not uh, so that's about all I can do for right now uh, maybe maybe later tonight I might be able to get to finish this off and show you if it works then I'm going to put it back in I'll show you a little bit about putting it back in uh, so that's all Froggy's got right now I'll see you later guys and gals